At the very beginning of Jesus' ministry, he showed John's two disciples either or. You want to have a nice discipleship? Easy? Don't follow me. Foxes had their dens. Birds of the air had their nests. But I don't have any place to lay my head and, fall and call it my own. It's not an easy thing to follow Jesus. Jesus gives us the parable. A man wants to build a tower. He better sit down and figure out what's going to cost. Because if he starts and doesn't finish, everybody will laugh at him. In Revelations, Jesus gives us some more of the either or. Being neither hot nor cold, I spit you out. No wonder, then, Jesus says, not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Then again, from both Testaments, you shall love the Lord your God, how? With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your being. And then the apostles said, hey, wait a minute. Lord, can anyone then be saved? Commentary of Holinsky moderated the idea of, of Haiti by saying, only when the siblings, parents, friends, whatever, stop us from following Jesus. Then we exercise hate. Now my mother and my sister were both great Christians. They weren't Lutherans. And when I said it wasn't to be a pastor, oh, that's nice. And you're right here in Central Florida, there's a lot of people that need to be saved. I said, well, no, I gotta go away. Go away. Gotta go to the seminary. Finally, they got an idea, okay, go to the seminary. Could it be four years old? I don't know, I don't know. Well, I went to the seminary. And then what did mom and sister do? They called up the district president and they told him he better find me a church in Central Florida. <laughs> <laughs> now, I didn't hate them for that, but I have to say I wasn't embarrassed. Lord, how can anybody then be saved? Well, on my own I can't. I would be lying to you if I told you I love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, and mind 100% of the time. <laughs> And in following the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not satisfied to find a fox den someplace and sleep in there, or a big old vulture's nest and sleep in that either. I found something out in my very first congregation. The local Baptist pastor, German Baptist, by the way, nice man, in his 50s, died. His wife, a very nice woman, completely untrained for anything except to be a pastor's wife, couldn't stay in the parsonage anymore. The parsonage is for what? It's for pastors. So she went to work as a cleaning lady in the hospital. And I determined that's not going to happen to us. Every time I had an opportunity, I bought my own or built my own parsonage. What is a parsonage for? It's for the pastor, not for the pastor's widow. Love, hate. Did Jesus ever contradict himself when he said, you heard it said of men of old, love your neighbors and hate your enemies, but I say unto you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Well, I don't think the Bible contradicts itself. Jesus didn't contradict himself, so how do we handle hating parents, loving neighbors, loving enemies? What about this? Honor your father and your mother. In the first place, Jesus does not say, if anyone comes up to me and wants to follow me, he must first hate his father and mother, sister and brother, wife and children, and himself, and then be saved. He doesn't say that. What does he say? Whoever wants to be my disciple got to do these things. You know the difference. We are saved by faith through grace. And this is not our own, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. But Jesus wants us to understand the cost of discipleship is not an easy thing. It involves hardships, it involves self-denial, sacrifice, disappointments, persecution. It is remembering and acting we are in the world, but we're not on the world, of the world. It is the straight and narrow path, seldom traveled, rather than the broad highway, which is very popular. Jesus put it this way. Remember what I told you, a servant is not above his master. They persecuted me, 
what did they say? They will persecute you also. So whoever's going to build something, better figure out if you're going to finish it. And whoever wants to be a dedicated follower needs to know the cost of discipleship. Throughout my ministry, I've seen people in the church join. I've tried, I've sat down with them for 20 hours, 10 lessons. This is what it means to be a Christian. This is what it means to be a church member. This is what it means to be a Lutheran church member. Yeah, 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 okay, I want to join. They don't always stay joined. Sometimes I've heard some pastors call it catch and release. <laughs> Very sad. And I'll have to say the other side of the coin, I've seen a lot of lifelong church members, good Lutheran people, who want to be disciples their own way under their own condition. They don't get their way, they either cause trouble or they become very irritable and sometimes they leave. But who knows the motto of Burger King? Have it your way. Jesus never said it. There is no such thing as a Christian Burger King disciple. This is what it's about, him. Come follow me, the Savior spake, all in my way abiding. Deny yourself, the world forsake, obey my call and guiding. Obey the cross, whatever be tied. Take my example as your guide. Then let us follow Christ our Lord and take the cross appointed. And firmly clinging to his word, in suffering be undaunted. For who bears not the battle strain? The crown of life shall not obtain. So be careful, be cautious, be concerned about those things which keep us from following Jesus as he wants to. For straight and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. And just be a few who find it, and you cannot find it without the light of the world. Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.